Okay, I'm back. So, you want your parts nice and sparkly clean um, after you get done cleaning it with the uh, um, Scotch Brite or whatever you're using. You can either throw it in a parts washer or just give it a brake clean bath. Try to make sure you don't do stuff like that and drop stuff. With new seals, you never want to use a pick or anything. There we go. Now, I'm going to take some green titanium compound. Don't need a whole lot. Seal. Try to get it straight. it's going on straight thing <laughs> pink chips there you are. So, here's the scary part. Uh, guys just jackhammering away, Sunday today.
you can get a little piece of throat or strap underneath these and kind of work them on too. Which I may have to do. I can see, even though I didn't, I mean, it's, it's stretched out a little. Take this guy. All right, I'm back at the E70B. It's, um, as you can see, I got mostly, hopefully everything that I need out and I got it set up. Got the barrel lifted up a little. Got my handy dandy little cable ready. Got the torque wrench out and ready. Um, so, and then I got the gland on, got the little spacer on. So you guys saw me with the gland, put the seals in. So all I did is um, grease up the inside really good, um, just with some assembly grease. 
and then just in some hydraulic oil and just slide it on. I got the threads really clean on this because, you know, I didn't melt the lock nut, but, you know, lock nuts usually aren't really designed for multiple, um, multiple use. Um, you know, some of the Teflon came out, so we're going to lock nut it, lock nut it, yeah. We're going to thread lock it back on. All I have is the thread locker paste, which I'm not a big fan of. It doesn't, I don't think it works as good as the, the liquid, but I mean, I could be wrong. Just from my experience, it doesn't seem to. Um, it's windy. And it, you guys can't tell, but it is super cold. Looks like we're gonna get some snow, so. That's why I'm trying to get everything set up and get this thing done in a hurry the winds blowing obviously I don't want to get any dust of to, to fly into onto anything here and um, so yeah sit, uh, see if we can get this I took the tape off the seal I I left this tape from yesterday the seal taped down so um, Hopefully that's not going to fight us too much. I like to leave it like taped. I mean, usually I don't have the option because usually I just assemble it in, you know, immediately. Not the next day, but um, I did tape this down so that might help when we go back together. Um, it just sucks this seal and then this seal will once it gets pressure or gets in the oil and gets working it's just it's gonna expand and um, seal but um, yeah so I am going to slide the piston on with nice pretty new seals Except for my dirty fingers. And we got the spacer on. Don't forget your seal inside the spacer. And then. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We're going to walk tight the snot out of it and use way too much long tail. So, yeah, next time this thing comes apart, there's not gonna probably be avoiding no avoiding using a torch. So get this guy on somewhat quick. I mean that, that gel doesn't seem to really set up fast like the doesn't set up like the liquid, but some of the liquid stuff sets up pretty quick, but Oh man, before you put your gland on, polish that um, rod up. Make sure it's really clean. though the the Teflon lock nut we did take it off and it's not gonna have <coughs> as much resistance as it did before but already I I'm feeling the Teflon or the lock nut whatever 
it is. I'm feeling the lock nut. It's getting hard to turn already. So we know that it's still doing something. The sucker it is. Long-winded. No. Man, I really wish I had the right software for this. wrench is not <coughs> exactly ideal but gets the job done start you start tilting your whole truck which is not exactly light you know you're getting some torque on her <coughs> click I'll make you about poop your pants in the morning. Okay. So now
What did I do? With my goof. Hmm. Okay. So I like using some of this assembly goo. It's like grease. For especially for this guy. Cause you see how it likes to stick out like that. That's what's gonna give you your your trouble when you're assembling. So this stuff, see that the difference there? See now how that kind of stuck that in there? Stuck it in the groove. So I'm not gonna have to worry about when I'm shoving this thing in. Well, I still will have to worry about it. So it still happens all the time. Especially if you're not perfectly straight. But what it's gonna do is hopefully help me keep that um that seal in the groove so it doesn't when I'm shoving it in pop out and we disaster strikes by us worst case scenario breaking a breaking a seal. So <clears throat> now do I use the crane or do I just carry it over there? The gland and everything on there it's it's not light. <laughs> See, this is the dumb stuff I always do. That's why my back's no good. <sighs> She's not light. This table's a little dirty. I already wiped it off. It's a little dirty, but this part of the rod that's on there, <coughs> I'll wipe it off. The part you really want to worry about is the seal and I got on that so I didn't want to come down with this one because now I'm going to be fighting gravity Definitely not ideal. Thank you. 
I don't like beating them in with a hammer unless I absolutely have to because it just makes you wonder if one of your seals is not quite right. Looking at the distance on the bottom and the top, I think this needs to come up a little. Ooh. There she goes. That's what I like to feel. See how it slid in? It was hard as crap, but I didn't have to use a hammer to beat it in. Which sometimes, I mean, <coughs> sometimes I do. Because, like, especially with this big, heavy cylinder, you're dealing with, and I got it at an angle because I'm dumb, you're dealing with, um, gravity too so see nice and tight which means the seals are sealing but If something was pinched in there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be able to move it by hand. So now, kind of got to do the same thing with this gland, which is not as crucial. But it's still pretty crucial. Well, it is as crucial because you don't want to obviously wrecking o-ring but I guess what I should say is a little more forgiven than those piston seals almost looks judging from the gap that I have to come up with this guy a little more this one I do have to use a hammer because you could see how hard it was to slide just on the rod itself with those new seals <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm not pinching an o-ring because yeah I'm pretty sure it needs to come up you would literally have to disassemble the whole cylinder, take the piston off again, if you did that. So 
sweet. Well, I ain't cold no more. I'll tell you that. All right, so now I'm gonna screw this sucker in and um, then I have to line up this little dimple here um, and then that clip comes through and it's gotta line up with that which might be a pain, I don't know. I marked it, kind of marked it, so we'll see but anyways um it's gonna that thing's got a mile long threads on it so to save footage i'm just gonna come back when it's screwed in all right i got the gopro going and this camera just in case just in case the gopro screws up i uh it's starting to rain slash snow. Okay. I have to move move the cylinder out a little. I have to move my other camera. Hopefully this one works, cause, ouch, it's not waterproof. Maybe a little too far. It's real close.
give her a few more pumps of grease. see if I have fittings I'm gonna see if I have the right fittings for those hoses and if I do I will um, I'll go ahead and build these these hoses here. Uh, clamp needs tightened too. But um so I'm gonna check that and then if I do I don't know if you've already you guys already made a hose making video so I don't know if I'll show you that but I'll uh 